all you soldiers, sailors, and Marines of the United Nations, the Special Service Division presents another episode in the amazing life of the Great Gildersleeve. Now let's peep into the life of the Great Gildersleeve. Our hero has finished his breakfast on this morning and has retreated from the jumble of ladders and paint buckets that still litter his living room onto the front porch. We find him there now waiting to share a ride downtown with Judge Hooker. He didn't eat much breakfast, Uncle Morris. I wasn't very hungry. Neither was I. The prunes tasted like turpentine. You know, I think that painter keeps his turpentine in our icebox. He hasn't been here for a week now. Isn't he ever going to finish the job? I don't know, and I don't dare ask him. Oh, well, here's the postman. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. This mail for you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fousey. Mostly bills, I suppose. Mostly. You got an airmail from New York City that might be something. Well, airmail from New York. Thanks, Newt. Well, well, well. It's from Brink. Brinker Hall? That stuck-up kid that visited here last year? His father, my dear. And he was not a stuck-up kid. He was a very well-brought-up young man. Well, what do you think of that? Brinker Hall is coming through Summerfield, and he... Oh, my goodness. Oh, Lord, what's the matter? He's got his wife with him. Well, what's the matter with her? She's a countess. A countess? Yes. A real one? Certainly. Don't forget that Brink was the richest man in my class at college. He drove a blue roamer and had two fur coats, one for Sunday. Gosh. Is he a millionaire? He's got millionaires working for him. He married this countess about three years ago after his first wife died. Very quiet wedding, of course, on a yacht. Well... They're coming. we better get busy. Oh, I should say so. When do they arrive? Well, let's see. Oh, it's tomorrow. Oh. He says, look forward to renewing our old acquaintance. We'll arrive around 7 in the evening. Well, good old Brink. Gee, a millionaire. Was he your roommate, Unc? Well, no. Brink didn't have any roommate. He lived with his valet. Oh. <laughs> well, come on. Got to get busy. Better get Bertie started on some fancy cooking. I imagine the Countess likes plenty of hors d'oeuvres and such. What are they, Unc? Oh, little things you eat too many of. <laughs> Marjorie, let's round up all the red stamps we've got in the house. We'll try to get a hold of a steak. A steak? Are you going to have any other people? Well, I suppose so. Hmm. Not many people in Summerfield know how to act around a countess. Though. I know how. There was a countess in Triple Comics last week. Gee, I wouldn't even know how to say hello to a countess. Well, in this thing, the hero just called her darling. I won't. <laughs> Leroy, I won't have you learning manners out of comic books. You'll address the countess as your excellency. Okay. I suppose you could invite her. You could invite Judge Hooker, Uncle Moore. That old goat, why, he'd fall in a dead faint if he ever saw a bona fide countess. There's plenty of others. Well, who? Let's see. Nobody. <laughs> All right, I'll ask Hooker, but he'll have to watch his step. What about me? Can I be hostess? I think you do it very nicely, my dear. How about Mrs. Ransom? Oh, I don't know. She and the countess might not hit it off very well. Miss Goodwin can talk French, Uncle. I heard her the other day. Well, an excellent suggestion, my boy. Add a little continental flavor to the occasion. Pardon him, why, Your Excellency? Still, who plays? Are you kidding? <laughs> Mrs. Ransom will be disappointed, Uncle. Well, that's just too bad about Mrs. Ransom. I can't have everybody. Besides, Leela stole my paint. And if I... Oh, there's Judge Hooker. Well, goodbye. Oh, Uncle Mort, see if Mr. Peavy can let you have some ice cream tomorrow. Great. Pistachio. That was Brink's favorite. Ought to be good enough for the Countess, too. <laughs> late, Gildy. Had a call from the city attorney about a damage suit he's working on. That's all right, Judge. Let me off at Peavy's, will you? I've got to do an errand. Glad to, Gildy. Oh, uh, Horace, if you're not doing anything tomorrow night, I, I'd like you to run in for supper with some friends of mine. Tomorrow night? Well, I generally have my bar association tomorrow. All right, Judge. You go to the bar association. I'll ask someone else to meet Cyrus W. Brinkerhoff. Cyrus Brinkerhoff? Has he got the countess with him? Yes. He and the Countess are coming to my house for supper tomorrow night, but of course, if you're busy. Oh, Throckmorton, I'd be delighted. Yeah. <laughs> Cyrus W. Brinkerhoff. There's a name that'll make Summerfield sit up and take notice. Well, I'm not going to make a splurge, you understand. Brink and I were friends in college, and I'm sure he'd want everything kept simple and homey. Well, I think you're showing splendid judgment, uh, Throckmorton. Still, a uh, line or two in the Summerfield indicator. An excellent suggestion, Horace. That's no more than common courtesy to a stranger within our gate. Yeah. Brinkeroff's a pretty nice fellow, is he guilty? Oh, uh, the salt of the earth, Horace. And generous? I remember in sophomore year, he gave our math teacher a fitted leather suitcase. Must have cost $150. That's quite a present. Yeah. 
And would you believe it, the darn teacher went ahead and plunked him anyway. <laughs> well, I'll surely look forward to meeting your friend, not to mention the comments. I remember her picture in the Rotary Reviewer section. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> Uh, but we got to remember, she's of noble blood, Horace. You'll mind your P's and Q's. My Gildy, you don't have to worry about me. All right. Just don't want you stabbing the bread with your fork like you do at the Summerfield Grill, that's all. Gildy, believe me, you'll have no cause and for... And don't stick your napkin in your shirt collar. Dag, never Gildersleeve, I've been around. Well, just watch your step, that's all. Are you going to dunk your bread in the gravy as usual? No, see here, hooker. Oh, stop, here's Peavy's. Oh, yeah, I forgot and don't you worry about my manners, Gildy. I'll be the class of fashion and the mold of form. Yeah, that's fine, Judge. I'll see you tomorrow around 7. And bring your ration book. Goodbye, Horace. Toodaloo. Yeah. Oh, he does something to embarrass me. Nothing like a hick lawyer. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, yeah, hello, Peavy. Peavy, I've got to ask you for a special favor. Well, I can give you anything in the drug line except penicillin or an alarm clock. <laughs> I don't need either of those, Peavy. I've got to have some ice cream that's fit for a millionaire. Yeah, I think I can manage that in a particular millionaire. Oh, yes, Peavy. Hold on to your soda fountain while I tell you. Cyrus W. Brinkerhoff. I think if I'd heard that name before, I'd remember it. Peavy, don't you ever read the newspapers? I read The Indicator every day. The Indicator? Don't you ever read about Wall Street, Washington, London? Well, not very much, Mr. Gildersleeve. You see, I, I don't know anybody in those places. Uh... <laughs> well, then I'll tell you. Cyrus W. Brinkerhoff is one of the biggest men in this country. Well, then why don't he buy his own ice cream? He's going to be my guest, Peavy. He's coming to my house. Well, why didn't you say so? Glad to do anything for a friend of yours. Peavy, will you please try to get me a quart of pistachio? Brink loved it so. Back in college, he always ordered pistachio. Yes, sir. Many and many's the plate of pistachio ice cream I bought old Brink. If you bought it for Brink, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, yes. Brink wasn't one of those millionaires that was always flashing his money. I often as not, he was clean broke. Not a penny on him. And he'd let me buy him some ice cream or any one of the fellas. Just a big, good-natured kid. <laughs> That's what I call being democratic, Peavy. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you could say he was just being economical. Peavy, you're speaking of a very dear friend of mine. <laughs> no offense. Well, never mind. Can you get me the pistachio? No, I don't really know if I can, but I promise to try. I'll bring it around myself tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, I know you'll do your best. Well, i got to be running along. A lot of things to get ready. Mm, I can imagine. Nice you had your house done over just in time for these rich folks to see it. Yes, very lucky. In fact... Oh, good heavens, Peavy, I just remembered. Why? My house is full of ladders, buckets, brushes, and wallpaper. Oh, i got to go. i got to drag that painter back to work and get him to finish up somehow. Uh, drag him back from where, Mr. Gildersleeve? He's been led astray by my ex fiance. <laughs> it rhymed. <laughs> Friendship is friendship, but enough is enough. When a woman comes into your house and steals your painter right off the ladder. No, see here, Leela. She's upstairs. Oh, Mr. Giddens. <laughs> Hello. I'll call her. Uh, no, wait a minute, don't. She's upstairs, you say? What's she doing? Is she busy? That I couldn't say. One thing I do, I mind my own business. Oh, I didn't mean that. And I keep my eyes to myself. I'm not one of these pussyfooting painters. No. Well, I just mean... I keep my hands off things, too. I'm not like some people. You don't have to count the silver after I've been around. Mr. Giddens, what I wanted to say, I just wanted to have a little talk with you before Mrs. Ransom comes down. Now, I'll talk as cheap as the fellow says. Yeah, very good. Uh, tell me, how much longer do you think it's going to take to uh, finish her stairs? Well, that's hard to say. Hard to say. Depends a little on the weather. Weather? What's the weather got to do with it? Well, on a damp day like this, varnish don't dry, you know. Oh, that's great. I mean, I'll tell you what you do. While you're waiting for a good day here, why don't you just come over to my house and finish up where you started, in the living room? Well, I don't know what she's going to say. Don't tell her. You don't have to tell her you're coming over to my house. Just tell her the weather's not right, or that you got a call from home or something. <laughs> Mr. Gildy, you can slip right out now while she's upstairs. Well, Drockmore. Oh, hello, Leela. Well, I thought 
thought you were upstairs. I was, but I came down the back way. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I was just having a little conversation with Mr. Giddens here about the weather. Yes, I heard it. <laughs> now, Leela, if you'll just let me explain. I'm not interested in your explanations, Mr. Gildersleeve. If you had come to me and asked me like a gentleman instead of sneaking in here and trying to take my painter away from me. He's my painter. I found him first. You took him away from me. Well, really. I'll leave it to Mr. Giddens. Well, Mr. Giddens? I'll pass. <laughs> Leela, let's be reasonable. I'm giving a dinner party tomorrow night, and my living room's a mess. A dinner party? Oh, silly, why didn't you say so? Well, I tried. Oh, I think that's so exciting. I just love dinner parties, and I haven't been to one since my husband died. Well, you don't understand, Leela. This is a very small party. Oh, I think they're much more fun when they're small and intimate, don't you? Well, this isn't even a party, really. It'll be very dull. Just this old college chum of mine coming to town. Oh. Uh, I thought I wouldn't invite anybody but the family, practically, and maybe a couple of old ducks like Judge Hooker. Chuck Martin, if you're trying to tell me that I'm not included, don't bother, because I'm not accepting any invitations yet out of respect for the memory of my late husband. I think you're right, Leela. Beauregard was a fine man. But as for the painter, if you think I'm going to let him leave here before he's finished these days... But, Leela, it's a dinner party. I may just possibly be given a dinner party myself, Chuck Martin, and... It won't be for any old ducks either. That's telling him, lady. <laughs> See here, Giddens. We'll be back with the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But now it's intermission time, and that brings the music of the old professor, Kay Kaiser. Come on, children. Yes, dance. What's the good word, Mr. Bluebird? Longingly at Harry Babbitt. Harry, live up to their expectations. Sing, lad. Wrong, would it be wrong to kiss? Seeing I feel like this, would it be wrong to try? Sky. If 
did his wrong. Then why were you sent to me? Why am I content to be? Greg Gildersleeve and his entertainment problem. It's the morning of his big day, and he's still got quite a few details to straighten out. Some of them have to do with the kitchen, where we find him now in conference with Bertie. Did Marjorie help you with the hors d'oeuvres? Oh, yeah. She brought me a recipe she cut out of a magazine. Here's a picture of it. Well, technicolor. <laughs> My, it does look mighty good, Bertie. They ought to look good. It would take me three hours to make a dozen of them, and you could eat them all in one bite. Yeah. Oh. Well, maybe you can think of something simpler. Some stuffed celery would be nice. I might have time to stuff a little celery, but I can hardly get anything done till that old painter gets his stuff out of the living room. Yes, I know. Yes. Say, Bertie. Yes, sir? I'll bet that painter would come over here in two minutes if I was to tell him you baked him an apple pie. Mr. Gilsey, once and for all, do you want me to cook for Mr. Brickerhoff or Mr. Gibson? Yeah, now, Bertie. The dinner is the first consideration, of course. I just thought if you could sneak a pie into the oven in your spare time. I declare, Mr. Gilsey, you're trying to kill me. You know I got to wash all the good china and clean the silver. And... I was only jerking, joking, Bertie. <laughs> well, please, Mr. Gilsey, go joke with them that's got time for joking, but I ain't. Not today. No, sir. No time for cracking jokes today. Here, now, take it easy, Bertie. <laughs> take it easy. You got me all flustered. I didn't mean to upset you. I'll be good. I'll leave you in peace. <laughs> uh, if Bertie was to walk out, we'd really be in a mess. Don't you ever have to practice any scales, Leroy? Oh, sure, but I'm warming up my repertoire for the counter. You'll not be called on to perform, young man. I hope eventually you'll reach the point where you know more than one piece. Next week, Miss Ruth Thomas. She's going to give me Dance of the Snow Fairy. I can hardly wait. <laughs> I've been meaning to have a few words with you about this evening, young man, and you too, my dear. Sure. Okay. In the first place, you children won't have dinner with us. You'll have to make other arrangements. There'll be just Judge Hooker, the Brinkerhoffs, and myself. Well, can I come? Well, no. The steak doesn't look as big as it did in the store. Mm. Well, what about Miss Goodwin? Uh, I decided not. I'm afraid that might lead to complications of one kind and another. I think I know what you mean. No, you don't, Marjorie. <laughs> That'll be enough from you, Leroy. Before I forget, I want you to wear a stiff collar tonight. Oh, gee. Leroy. A stiff collar and I don't even get any steak? Well, you won't dine with us, but I want you to be here when they come and greet them courteously. Okay. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Brinkerhoff. How do you do, Your Excellency? Well, very good, Leroy. Uh, one other thing. Remember always to back out of any room the Countess is in. What? Holy smoke, what's that for? Just a little tribute to the nobility. You never turn your back on a king or a duke. Afraid you'll get a kick in the pants? <laughs> this is no laughing matter, Leroy. Now, suppose you were saying good night to the Brinkerhoffs. How would you do it? Well, good night, Mr. Brinkerhoff. Good night, Your Excellency. Good night. Look out for those paint <laughs> Uh, what a place to entertain royalty. Marjorie, have the flowers come? Well, uh, what time is it, ye gods? Is that clock right? Now, calm down. Leroy, I want you to pick up around here. Pick up that catcher's mitt. Get that machine gun out of the hall. Okay, I'll... Bertie, you didn't forget the hors d'oeuvres. Oh, the place cards. We haven't made out the place cards. Uncle Lloyd, for goodness sake, calm down. Place cards are important. They don't know where to sit. In a pinch, you could tell them, couldn't you? We're not running a cafeteria here, my dear. It's a very important dinner, and the Brinkerhoffs are very important people. Did I show you the social note about it in the newspaper? I showed it to you. Oh, so you did. Where is it? I've lost it. Oh, I've lost the clipping. Somebody stole it. Now, now, take it easy. I have it right here in my... 
Oh. Uncle, <laughs> uh, I think you ought to go upstairs and lie down for a little while. I can't. I've got a million things to do, my dear. A million things to do. You're running around here like a chicken with his head off. Chicken. Bertie, did the chicken come? Mr. Gilsey, we ain't having chicken. We're having steak. You brought it yourself. Oh, that's right. We decided against chicken, didn't we? Marge is right, Uncle. You better go lie down. Mr. Gilsey. Yes, Bertie? Before anybody lays down. Yes. Let's face it. Oh, what are we going to do about the living room? Oh, that's right, the living room. I ain't going to have no time to clean up no messes left by no painters. Not this afternoon, not with all the cooking i got to do. No, sir, not me. Well, we, we can't wait for him any longer, Bertie. There's only one thing to do. We just have to take the bull by the horns. Leroy? Oh, you want me to take him by the horns? While you're resting, my boy, all I'm asking is your assistance. Just give me a hand with these things. Put them out on the back porch. You take the step ladder and the buckets, and I'll bring the brushes. <laughs> I don't care what Mr. Giddens likes or doesn't like. The place is a mess, and he hasn't been near it for a week. Yeah, but he doesn't like people touching his tools. He's awful fussy, you know. Well, I'm fussy about my guests. When I entertain a countess, I don't ask her to sit on a stepladder with her feet in a paint bucket. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's the trouble with painters and people these days. Just because they're hard to get, they think they can get away with anything. They can, too. Little somebody at the door. Answer it. Oh, my goodness. Wait a minute. Don't let him in yet, my dear. Leroy, put that ladder back where you got it. I thought you were going to tell him, Aunt. I'll tell him some other time. Put it back. Okay. Carry it out. Bring it back. No, no. Put it where it was so he won't notice. I did. Come on. Turn it this way a little. Yeah, that's better. Now, is everything just the way it was? It was half a bologna sandwich on top of a step ladder. <laughs> well, put it back. I can't. I ate it. <laughs> How many times have I told you not to put things in your mouth? Well, I was hungry. You're always hungry. All right, my dear, let him in. No, Mr. Giddens, come in. Well, we didn't know if we were ever going to see you again, Mr. Giddens. I wonder if you could move. Yeah, that's one thing you don't need to worry about, Mr. Gildersleeve. When I start anything, I finish it. I'm not like some people. You have to keep after them all the time. Good. Well, if you're all through over at Mrs. Ransom's, do you think you could move? Two for today is a little more to do tomorrow. Yes, sir. I'm not like some people. When I start anything, I finish it. <laughs> uh, hand me that brush there, Sonny. Uh, Mr. Giddens, you're not going to start painting at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, I've got to give her another coat. I always give a ceiling two coats. You have to do it now? I thought you wanted me to finish up here. Well, I do, but you see, I've got these people coming to dinner, and I thought if we could just move your ladders and buckets and things out onto my back porch, we could sort of straighten up in here. Mm, just have to bring them in again in the morning. I know, but just for the evening. Well, you're paying for it. That's the way you want it. Oh, uh, thank you. Yes, that's one thing about me. I don't give people any argument. That's the way they want it. That's the way they want it. <laughs> Just wish they'd make up their minds, that's all. Uh, Mr. Giddens, you don't mind doing this? Nope. You're uh, not mad or anything? Nope. Oh, I think it's going to look great when you get it done. One side, please. Uh, look a lot better already. <laughs> don't you think so? Open that back door for me, will you, son? Come, Giddens. Yeah, just wish they'd make up their minds, that's all. Oh, gosh, now he's mad. What's he going to be mad about? I waited for him a whole week. Now, have we forgotten anything? No, not a thing, Uncle Mort. I think everything looks very nice. Oh, I'm as nervous as a schoolgirl. Just remind Bertie to light the candles before you sit down. Oh, yes. Bertie, candles. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I have to run along before they get here. They'll understand. Hey, what do I have to stick around? Your sister has a date. Well, so have I. I'm supposed to be at Piggy's for dinner at 7. It's only 7 now. But i got to change my clothes before I go. What do you have to change your clothes for? You're all dressed up now. You don't think I want Piggy to see me looking like this. What's the matter with the way you look? I look like a choir boy. Don't worry. You won't fool anybody. Well, <laughs> nobody will take you for an angel. Now, wait a minute. What yeah. did I tell you two? No fighting. Your sister looks very sweet, Leroy. So do you. Yeah, sweet. This color is killing me. Uh, how do you think I feel in this one? Leroy, come back here. Good Let Bertie go. Do you want him to think we haven't any servants? Okay. Now sit down. Hold your hands. What? Stick in your shirt tape. I'm coming. I'm coming. Keep your shirt off. You... <laughs> Bertie, that's not what I told you to say. But can't I straighten the gills, please? Yes, you're looking fine, Bertie. Thank you, sir. You're looking good yourself. <laughs> I remember what I told you, both of you. I remember what you were to say. 
judge. Oh, the judge. Relax, everybody. Well, I'm on time, I trust. Right on the dot, Horace, as usual. Well, I like to be punctual. Good evening, Leroy. Hi, Judge. Leroy, what did I tell you? Oh, good evening, Judge Hooker, and how are you this evening? <laughs> you see, I told you they'd laugh, Uncle. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Leroy. That was very nicely said. Marjorie, you're not leaving us. I'm afraid I have to, Judge. She's going out to dinner. Good night, my dear. Good night. Good night, Marjorie. Have a good time. Oh, can't I go? Piggy's waiting. No, sit down. I want one of you to stay here and say how do you do to Mr. and Mrs. Brinkerhoff. Gee, I don't see why it has to be me. I'll admit it's an unfortunate choice. But you're going to stay. Gosh, Marge gets away with everything. Well, Trot Morton. Leroy. Leroy. Yes, Uncle? All right, Leroy, you may go. Thanks, Uncle. Well, Trot Morton, I suppose you've been looking forward to this evening, haven't you? Yes, I haven't seen old Brink in 20 years. Why, George, I can't understand why he's so late. You're sure this was the night? Of course this was the night. Oh, that must be then. Sit down, Judge. Well, I have to sit down for it. Stick in your shirt front. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes, sir, he's in. It's Mr. Peavy with ice cream. Oh, come in, Peavy. I uh, don't want to intrude, Mr. Gildersleeve, but as I was coming up to walk here, the boy gave me this telegram. It's, it's for you. Well, I wonder who it can be from. No postmark on it. Uh, I wonder if it could be from Brink. Why don't you open it and see? Good idea. Oh. From Brink? Yeah, from Brink. What does he say? Read it. <laughs> Change plan. Sorry. Regard, Cyrus Brinkerhoff. Uh, Mr. Gildas, leave about the ice cream. I, I couldn't get the pistachio. I'm, I'm sorry. The best I could do was vanilla. That's all right, Peavy. Doesn't matter now. Thanks for trying. Gildy. Let me alone, Horace. Gildy, old man, don't take it like this. I wouldn't mind so much, Judge. Only doggone it. I've gone to all this trouble, spent all my ration points. Bertie's done all this cooking. I've offended Leela. I threw out the painter. I got you over here for no reason. They printed that piece in the paper, and well, doggone it, I think he might have let me know. Mr. you receive me. I say something? Go ahead, baby. Well, I'd just like to say that any man who'd do a thing like that is not a friend. He's, he, he, well, he's an old fool. Peavy. <laughs> By George, you're right, though. And I'll tell you a secret, fellas. I never did like that guy from the first day I met him. I never liked anything I heard about him. Uh, well, he's done us one favor. He got us all together for a fine steak dinner. Come on, Judge. Come on, Peavy. Yeah, come on. Oh, no, gentlemen, I, I couldn't. You see, Mrs. Peavy is waiting at home for me. Well, call her up. Tell her you won't be home. Yeah, tell her you're out for the night. Sure. Hey, Judge, what do you say we call up some girls? Make it a party. Leela? And Miss Goodwin. Wait, we've got to get somebody for Peavy. I know. Mrs. Peavy. The very thing. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Gildersleeve was rebroadcast especially for you men and women in the armed forces of the United Nations by the Special Service Division of the War Department of the United States of America.